You probably have known him before uh, as the primary author for uh, Darren Grimm, the uh, patch analysis tool. Um, he work, currently works for Microsoft in their Malware Protection Center, and we're going to talk about um, uh, VM instrumentation. Yeah. So please give a warm round of applause. Yeah, thank you. So actually you can download the slide from this link. So if anyone is interested, yeah, you can just write down. Also, you can find this from the Shimokon tag uh, from the Twitter. So I just uh, posted this this morning, so you can find it. Okay, cool. So uh, this is about uh, AVM and AVM security and AVM uh, instrumentation. So before that, maybe not so sure how many uh, heard about AVM. So just one, anyone, two. So actually, this is the acronym for Action Script Virtual Machine. So. Probably you guys all know about ActionScript, right? So this is the VM that will run the ActionScript bytecode. So to understand what AVM is, maybe we need to look into the format of uh, flash file. So the flash file is consisted of consists of uh, header and tags. The header has some signature and version number, the length field, and it has tags. And the text has uh, individual data. So it has a type, length, data structure. So each type has its own format. So from all the format, uh, one of the type is uh, number 82. And this tag contains uh, AVM2 bytecode. So not all flash files contain this tag, but some flash files that has some actions and some flash files uh, that has been compiled with action script will have this tag. So what is AVM2? Uh, there are multiple versions of action script, and the latest one is action script uh, uh, 3. And AVM2 is that the virtual machine that runs uh, action script 3 bytecode. And the previous virtual machine actually used uh, some kind of interpreter model. So every time the bytecode is run, it will interpret every instructions every time. So it was kind of slow. So they uh, improved that using uh, JIT. So probably you guys all know about JIT technology, right? So this is a just-in-time, uh, just-in-time just compilation thing. So when the virtual machine reads the bytecode, it will actually dynamically generate the native, uh, native code uh, on the heap. So actually this thing uh, sometimes uh, uh, creates some potential security risks. So there are some uh, known vulnerabilities with uh, JVM before. So JVM is much, much popular than ABM. So there were some known vulnerabilities before. So this is not only about ABM, but kind of ABM vulnerabilities are kind of very, very interesting. So the weird thing is that since uh, 2010, we like observed a lot of like ABM2 uh, uh, attacks appearing from the internet. So that's very weird. So usually that was all the attacks are like uh, caused by one byte fudging or that kind of stuff. So there were 
probably they don't understand much about that AVM, but they were doing just all those, what is that, one byte fuzzing, just changing one byte from the flash files and running it from the flash player. And if they observe some kind of crash, then they make some exploit out of that. So I'm not so sure they are just, they really understand what is going on, but they see some crashes and they make using some heap spraying and they make the exploit. And it is, it was very, very successful. So the problem is that, uh, just, li just like I said, uh, all the software has the vulnerabilities and this AVM is software, so virtual machine should have some vulnerabilities. And these vulnerabilities are not like a user. They are not just buffer flow or they are not just uh, heap flow. They are kind of very, very complicated like uh, vulnerabilities. So just understanding the vulnerabilities are very, very difficult actually. So and debugging the vulnerabilities are not easy. So what I'm presenting today is about how we can like debug these vulnerabilities that is not very user. So if the vulnerabilities are just buffer flow, you can just debug it very easily, right? So the, the stack is corrupt and you can just trace down what like data is corrupting the data and you can just e easily figure out where the data is coming from. But for AVM, it's not that simple. It's all about some logical errors with the virtual machine JIT code generation thing. So to understand what is going on in, uh, inside the VM, yeah, you need some kind of new method. And also, uh, many malwares are actually using some kind of obfuscation thing to load uh, the other suite file dynamically. So probably you guys are very, very familiar with what is a JavaScript obfuscation thing, right? It's very, very popular, right? So whenever somebody is uh, putting some link and you visit the site and you are got owned, you will get owned. And in the case, actually, if you open up the HTML file, it's not plain text, just, just plain, H, it's not plain HTML or JavaScript. It's kind of obfuscated itself. So kind of very, very, like, uh, in multiple layers of, like, uh, evil, like, a uh, method is called. So in that case, it is, like, uh, very, very hard to figure out actually what is going on under the JavaScript. So same thing is happening with three file. So in that case, uh, maybe I can, pre I can, I will show, show you how we can use this, uh, ABM instrumentation to, um, dynamically like uh, analyze all the uh, uh, suite files. So all the methods are done with ABM instrumentation. And I'm going to show two methods here. One is code, code coverage investigation. And second one is hooking classes. So actually you can just hook some uh, ABM supported uh, APIs and you can replace the uh, API to your, your, your own. And in that case, you can just hijack every network traffic or some byte, byte code loading classes or data allocation classes. So if you hook the data allocation classes, you can uh, hook all the memory allocation activities from the like a uh, flash file. So you can see how it is allocating some like a heap memory and you can see how they are using some kind of heap spraying from the AVM suite files. So the first example is actually the vulnerability that, were, that was very, very popular last year. It was CV 2011-0609. This is kind of very, very like a most abused, one of the most ob abused vulnerabilities from flash files. So using this example, I will show you how we can uh, use by, uh, ABM instrumentation to trace how the code is executed. So with this example, I use trace uh, API from ActionScript. This is some simple debugging API. So if you uh, use trace API and put some strings and form format related strings, then you can just print out some debugging messages to some de debugging file. Also, maybe you can use debug file or debug line instructions from AVM. Uh, but this is same as what is uh, with uh, int3 instruction from 
x86. So if you put these instructions inside a bytecode, then it will call, uh, it will check whether there is a debugger attached to the Flash player, and it will actually call the Flash player debugger. So if you download the Flex SDK, it contains the actually uh, the Flash debugger. So you can use this debugger for the uh, flash file that is not intended to be debugged. So you, if you insert all these uh, instructions to the flash file, then you can make a debuggable uh, sweep file. So you can use uh, the debugger to debug and trace steps through all the execution flows uh, inside uh, sweep file. Uh, but the first method is kind of enough for, to show how the code coverage is happening. So I use the first uh, example here. So to, before that, we need to understand how, what is the CV 2011-06-09 looks like. So the purpose of showing these uh, vulnerability details is not to make you guys to understand what it is, because these details are very, very complicated. I don't expect you guys to minutes or something. So I'm just showing this, that this to make you guys realize how it is uh, complicated to understand and debug all these kinds of vulnerabilities. So uh, the, the es essence of these vulnerabilities is some instructions are created to work with object type A and somehow object type B is passed to that instructions. So the G GTA, the native code is actually uh, meant to be processing some type A object and actually the control flow is actually passing some uh, type B object to that, like a GTD code. In that case, the type of uh, type confusion is happening, right? So in that case, it's uh, to totally like uh, processing some wrong object. In that case, it's like uh, calling some method. When it's calling some method, actually it's accessing some data field maybe, and it makes like a call to some somewhere in the memory that is not intended to be intended to be called. In that case, it will, combined with hip, uh, hip spraying or gist spraying, then it will make the code ex execution possible. So this is a diagram that shows what is happening. The left side diagram shows uh, the original uh, bytecode control flow. So if you can just open up all these um, bytecodes using some, uh, all the flash tools, there are a lot of flash disassemblers, or uh, decompilers. So you can just open up the, uh, the original uh, bytecode. So actually this um, attack file was generated from some valid, just normal C file from the internet. So, so the attackers just downloaded the file from somewhere, so they are just gathering some sample files and they were doing some kind of one byte fudging. So they were just changing one byte and see if it is crashing. And they were just repeating them for maybe a few months or a few years. And they just found that if you just change one byte from this function uh, from the basic block B, so you, if you change just one byte from that jump instruction, you make that uh, basic block to jump to between uh, a1 and A2. So originally B was jumping to C and uh, uh, the C block, right, here. The, the, the left side, it was jumping to C block, but uh, if you change one byte from basic block B, it will make the jump goes to uh, between the A1 and A2. It will split the A block, basic block A to two, A1 and A, A2. So some kind of control flow, uh, like uh, tweaking is happening here. So actually, if you uh, look up the look at the bytecode itself, this is this uh, bytecode. Uh, this assembly was generated by some tools that our internal tool. So actually, we are, we are using IDA, and we made some IDA plugin to disassemble all the bytecode. So left side is the original control flow. So this is kind of very, very abstract view, and this is the, the real disassembly from the real uh, malware. So the left side is acquired from the, the original file that used for fudging, and the right side was uh, taken from the malware. 
So if you compare the left side and right side, there is only one difference. So the B block was actually jumping to the middle block, some big block there. But if you look at the right side, the B block is almost same except the jump instruction. So the jump instruction is jumping to A2 block, just changing one byte. So new control flow is generated here. So you can actually dump the old zip code is uh, generated inside the heap memory. So during the execution, actually, you can take out the heap memory and you can disassemble the heap JIT code from IDA. And the view from uh, the picture on the right side is the actual disassembly code from the JIT code. That is, com that is like uh, uh, generated from that original byte code. So the original byte code are generated like uh, that form. So if you look at closely, they have some similarity in the form of the control flows and everything. They are not exactly the same, but there are some rules and a lot of optimizations happening there. So they are not exactly one-to-one -one match. But if you look at that, you can figure out, oh, actually it's calling some uh, dynamic method from some object. You can figure it out. So this one is acquired from the original file. And this one is from the mutated file. So if you look, at, look into this, the left side is the original byte code, and right side is the uh, generated byte code, uh, generated native code, x86. So if you look into this, the actual form, the representation of the native code is kind of like a change it a lot. Like if you compare this to this, just uh, one control flow change makes uh, the G code like a kind of like a messy or whatever. So actually this makes all the like a crash happening. So if you debug all these things uh, from Win debugger, you can see that actually the crash is happening inside A2 dash block from the right side, the picture on the right side. So this is the summary of the vulnerability. So uh, from the actual code was generated uh, based on uh, path B from this picture. So there are A2 basic block is getting two control flows, right? Two incoming control flows, B and A1. Actually the JIT code is generated uh, from the path A there, so eight code is generated based on the data type that is passed from uh, basic block B. And the type is com, green, star, core, simple timeline type. And A2 JIT code is actually processing that type. But actually when the sweep file is loaded, uh, the control flow comes from A1. So A1 is passing totally different data type. And it makes the crash happening and you can use this vulnerability to, code, to execute some like a code combined with hip spraying. So this is uh, saying same thing, the actual code run is from A1 to A2 and this makes the crash. So to analyze all these vulnerabilities, so it can take a long, long time, it can take a few weeks, sometimes it can take a few days to figure out actually what is happening under the hood. So there are many shortcuts here, actually. The first one is sweep diffing. So if you have some malware samples, you can just uh, look it up, open it up from IDA, right? So in that case, you can see some unique stri strings from the IDA files, uh, the sweep files. Uh, because it will be using some component, some private component or some component from some website. In this case, it is com green sub core simple timeline. So if you observe these strings, you can just look it up from Google or Bing and you can find some website that actually created that component. And in that case, you can just uh, browse some website and you, maybe you can find some similar uh, original like a sweep file. And using that sweep file, you can just comparing them, just using some uh, 
like a hex diffing tools, right? Some kind of beyond the compare or there are some other tools that can, you can actually compare hex bytes. And using that tool, you can see what bytes are modified and you can just uh, uh, disassemble all the C files, uh, the original one and the modified one and you can go to that position and you can see, oh, the control flow is uh, modified like this. So the output will be uh, something like this. So after this uh, sweep diffing, you can see, oh, the, the original control flows are modified to the mutated one. Uh, so you can just figure out, oh, maybe the jump instruction change maybe uh, making some tight confusion here. And you can just guess that. And using combine, uh, combining that with some decode dumping and like a debugging, then, oh, you can actually figure out this whole picture and it takes a long, long time to perform all these things. And second method, uh, the method, oh, this is, uh, this is the actual, the crash you will get when you run the, the malicious sample. So from this, you can just see uh, some native instructions, right? So it's moving. Uh, some EDX 70H data to ECX register and it's accessing some invalid memory. And if you put some heap spraying uh, shellcode to that memory, if you can load that using some sweep file like um, uh, G-spraying or uh, heap spraying, then you can make uh, the code execution happening. But from this picture, this uh, crash, crash point it is really, really hard to figure out what is happening. If you don't have, you can't find the original C file, then you, 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 you don't have anything to compare, right? So if you have the, somehow you can find the original file, you can compare that to the mutated file and you can figure out oh, what byte is modified and what control flow is changed and what is changed and you can figure it out somehow. But if you can't find this, uh, the original file, then there is uh, nothing you can do much, right? So because the starting point will be this crash dump, cr crash point, and there is nothing much you can do to figure out actually what is happening here. So these are the problems. When you have some flash file crashing, it is extremely hard to figure out what is happening if you can't find any original samples. So the attack, began maybe 2010 or maybe before, they just used some files from the internet. They just mutated it and they, they just used it for the real attack. So it was really, really easy to figure out what, what, what was happening because you can just grab, search some unique strings and you could find the original files. But these days, they make their own samples. So they find the crashes, maybe they do some more analysis and they create their own POC file. So in that case, you can't find the original file because the attacker only has that original file. So in that case, it's very, very hard to like, uh, analyze all these vulnerabilities. So to solve this problem, uh, we can use code coverage testing. So this is the basic big picture, big picture that's showing, uh, that's showing the, how the binary instrumentation is uh, done. So, the upper picture shows the original C file. So it has a header and all the ABM, different color means different ABM tag, uh, different C file tags. And one of the uh, tag is ABM tag, the yellow, yellow block there. So you can just dissect all the ABM, uh, decompile or disassemble all these uh, ABM tag content. And you can just, uh, insert your own instructions between them. So all, for all the functions or for all the basic blocks, you can just put your own instructions. In this case, it's a trace. You can just put the trace. Trace and some unique strings. Oh, it's executing uh, some basic block uh, number or something, some unique numbers. So you can just put insert all these instructions here and you can just recombine all these um, instrumented ABM tag into one and you create a new C file. So during this, uh, the picture is very simple, right? So you just break it down 
and you insert new instructions and you just combine them all together and you just run it. Yeah, yeah, that, that is really, really good question because my, this uh, approach, yeah, the question was um, doing this like a reconstructing thing, maybe the original, the, what is that, the characteristics of the original bug might be lost, right? That is the question. So, yeah, actually that's why we are doing this. There, there can be other methods like uh, you can actually AVM tag actually you can just decompile them and you can just get the original action script and you can just put the trace uh, instructions for every like functions you want to trace and you just compile them again and you make the sweep file. You can do that. In that case, you will lose all the characteristics that is making the crash. So that's why we used this method is preserving the original characters, characters uh, characteristics as much as possible. So it will not try to break uh, the original structure of the ABM text. Even though it looks invalid, we just try to uh, make the, maintain the original structures and original, maybe there can be some invalid instructions and we are trying to, uh, trying best, uh, we are trying best to, to observe the original like uh, structure and instructions, bytecode and everything. So this is the disassembly uh, from the original, like, um, this assembly was instrumented like this. You can just put the, it, it is very simple, right? So it's calling trace method here for every basic blocks. So if you run this uh, sweep file, it will generate a huge, huge amount of log file. So it will dump the basic block numbers and so that you can figure it out. You can just grab these basic numbers from this, uh, uh, this assembly later to see how the control flow is uh, uh, working. So this is the last part of that generated uh, debug log. And if you look at the last line, actually the last line shows the point where the crash was happening. So to interpret that um, numbers, so it will show the basic block and 314279 some numbers and there is a 27. And 27 means uh, the basic block 27. And actually you can exactly pinpoint where the crash is happening here. So basic block 27. And how about all these other numbers? So the other numbers are actually uh, the function numbers and the basic blocks from other functions. And out of these numbers, you can figure out the actual call stack that is actually calling that exact function. So you can actually get the exact call stack. So it is coming from some, uh, what is that? Constructor from timeline max and it's calling some like uh, uh, classes and simple line timeline line classes and it's calling tweet core, tweet core constructor. So this whole thing, this, you can figure out, oh, this crash is happening when it is creating some uh, classes. So this is the first example. So using this old tracing thing, you can figure out actually, oh, before using this tracing thing, what you get is actually uh, this thing. So out of this thing, you can't figure out anything. But using this instrumentation, you can get actual exact cost tag and you can figure out what is actually happening inside uh, that action script. And then the second example is the obfuscation thing. So just I said, ABM is uh, used for obfuscate the sweep file itself. So you can actually, ABM provides, actually action script provides uh, the functionality to load uh, sweep file, the other sweep file. So actually you can embed other sweep file inside the other sweep file. So you can, and it doesn't need to be in like a, in like a bytecode form. So it can be dynamically generated using some like uh, instructions. You can just, so that you, you, can, you can't just take it out easily. 
So I will use uh, class hooking to figure out how we can just dump the hex bytes like uh, easily, even though it is uh, generated dy dynamically. So many exploits use these things. Basically, every C file related exploits are using this method. And I will use CV2011-06-11 uh, uh, vulnerability. This one is also very, very popular one. So the, the other one and this one is the most popular vulnerability from uh, 2011. So this is the structure of uh, the exploits. So they are usually delivered through some container. And the container file contains the layer 1 suite file and it contains layer two C file. So layer one is loading layer two dynamically. And actually layer two has some vulnerabilities inside it. So it will trigger the vulnerability. And the payload is generated from layer one. So layer one will do all the G spraying or heap spraying thing. And layer two will trigger the vulnerability and it will make the code execution happening. And all these C files is just one C file and it will be contained inside maybe PDF file or sometimes it's Excel file because there is no organizations that is allowing just uh, sending C file to some mail account, right, these days. So they are just putting that inside some Office file because there, you should allow Office files or PDF files. So that's why they are putting all these inside some containers. Or maybe you can just load this from some website. So you just putting all these, put all these to some website, some suite file, and just you pass the link and user clicks, clicks it, then you are just owned. So this is some picture that is actually showing how maybe, yeah, it can be very interesting picture because I just got the idea when I was watching some documentary about so World War II. <laughs> so I was like very, very surprised. I was just wondering how to ignite uh, the nuclear bomb. I was, uh, maybe there can be very, very complicated method, but the method was like very, very simple. The a nuclear bomb has um, some payload, right? Some nuclear ma materials and the blue box contains the explosives, the bomb, actual some bomb, TNT or whatever. I'm not so sure. So I'm not uh, like uh, expert in this field. <laughs> so it has some explosives inside. And the, exp the, the blue box and the, uh, the, what is that, the payload is connected through some pipeline. And, and there is a bu bullet, bullet inside the pipeline. So when the explosives are exploded, it will make uh, like a lot of force energy, right? So it will make the uh, huge velocity uh, to the um, uh, bullet. And it will make uh, like a high speed movement and it will hit the payload and it will make the, uh, all these nuclear thing, nuclear thing happening. So this is same in C file. So layer two C file, it will trigger the vulnerability. So it will trigger, it will crash, it will make some invalid memory access happening. And actually that will just hit some hip, hip spraying uh, payload inside the memory and it will make all the execution, code execution happening. So this is the most uh, simple example um, that contains that uh, layer two C file. So you can just open it from the, uh, you can just open the C file from the hex editor and just look for FWS because that is a signature for FWS file, right, C file. So if you read it in backward, it's SWF. So FWS and SWF. So just search for FWS or CWS because they are the signature string for magic, num magic string for C file. So if you can find it, you can just take out that part to another file and it is just C file. So you can just take it easily. This was happening like two years ago, but it's not anymore like this. So the other form is like um, using some strings. So push string is the instruction from AVM. 
So inside AVM, it's push, pushing some like uh, just ASCII string. So it's not in this bytecode form. But these are like uh, just ASCII string. So you can just uh, search for uh, four, six, five, seven, five, three. This string inside the suite file. Maybe you can find these uh, uh, instructions or uh, this uh, suite file, second layer suite file. So this is saying same thing. So this is what is happening now, actually. So can you guys figure out what is happening here? So instead of pushing the string, it's pushing doubles and integers. Actually, double is eight bytes, and integer is four bytes. So actually, if you combine all these bytes that is pushed to the stack, actually, they are like, a, they are actually sweep file. So they are splitting all the sweep file into like eight bytes and four bytes, and they are pushing it to the stack instead of using that simple one line string. So in this case, maybe they have some obfuscation, more obfuscations are happening there. So maybe it will be really, really hard to take out the original suite file. So if you look down, actually it's using some kind of encryption method. So here, uh, here, so it's calling encrypt. Actually what it is doing is decrypting or, or decoding, but they are just using wrong name here. So it is the, the string that is pushed to the stack is not actually, uh, the suite file itself, but it is in kind of uh, encoded format, kind of using XOR or whatever. So it's calling encrypt, and after that, actually it's loading here, load byte here. So it might be so small. So it's a load byte. So it's pushing everything to the stack, and it will decode using uh, decode the uh, thing using their own algorithm, and after that, it will load that to the memory, dynamically load it. So this is the uh, routine that is actually doing the decryption thing. The name is in encrypted, but it's doing decoding thing. So it's just calling uh, here. It's pushing 0xff, and it's doing XOR. So it's XORing uh, the original, like, uh, um, data, and it will make the the original suite file data. So the method might be you can just insert some dump code between these uh, load bytes part, right? So if before calling this load bytes API, maybe you can just insert some trace method and make it to dump all the hex bytes. But th there is another like uh, method here. So this one is much better. So you can use some AVM insertion. So you can create your own AVM code and you can insert it to the uh, malicious code and make the original malicious code to call that AVM. So this is the method using some inserting. So you, you just insert some dump method there and make it to dump uh, the hex bytes. So it involves all the stack level calculation because uh, this AVM is using stack. So maybe if you don't process the stack correctly, then maybe you can mess up all the things and it will make all the things not working. So you can just hook the class. Um, and I'm using AVM insertion. And one more method involved with this is uh, whenever the AVM is loading other classes, it's using uh, names, actually. So it's a string. So if you replace the original string to your own class's name, then you can hook up all the calls to the original class. So you just need to make some stop code that is calling the original one, and you can just load it to the original uh, suite file and make it make all the calls to that original uh, class, should uh, make, it, make them go through your own class. So it's a kind of detouring or like a class hooking thing. So this is a very, very simple in ABM world because it's using classes, not kind of a, some fancy table or whatever. So it's just a string. So you just need to uh, replace the class name. 
So this is uh, some concept from biology. It's a kind of very, very simple concept, right? So there is a chromosome A and chromosome B on the left side. And chromosome A has some feature that is very, very good. So you need to, uh, for example, if there is um, uh, corn and it has some bugs, bugs are eating the corn. And chromosome A has some, like, uh, uh, the genes that makes some, like, uh,